Glass is one of the hardest things to do in ArcViz. So I want to show you today my workflow for making realistic glass in D5 Render. So let's get started. So whenever it comes to materials of any sort, you should always have some sort of reference board, just something you could refer to of just random photos for you to kind of align yourself. So what I've got here, a bunch of different photos of glass, and there's a couple of characteristics that I feel like a lot of people don't realize that glass has. So I kind of want to explain what's going on. So this is a typical high rise. And one thing that people always forget in ArcFizz is that there is a certain warp and tint to glass. So if you see here, this is not a sharp, clean edge of a reflection, right? See how it's kind of distorted? Here's some more examples, if you don't believe me. So basically what happens is because this glass is tempered, it's basically gets really, really hot and make sure that the, uh, the glass is safe when it cracks and everything could even be laminated. There's a lot of heating and cooling. And so what can happen is the glass slabs actually kind of shrink a little bit, or maybe there's an issue with the frame and it kind of gets compressed. My point is it's not perfectly flat. So because of that, we need to make sure we actually have these distortions. And then we also have some sort of tinting, right? So tinting is the color of the glass and that's going to make it so the space doesn't get as hot, reduces glare. And also aesthetically, that's kind of cool. So now that we've got like the theory and the foundations down, let me show you how to do that in D5. So I've got this uh, glass tower building here. Um, this is a Scene Express project, uh, number 96. Check it out if you want to download it from D5. So anyways, I'm going to select this red basic material and we want to make sure we're in the transparent material template. So I'm going to go here. And as you can see here, the tint is all wrong and the reflections are perfect. Okay. This is a building that's right behind us. That's this guy. Hello building. Um, and you can see it's, it's super, super perfect. And the tint is wrong. So first things first is let's get the tint, right? So I go to base color. Then I grab my little eyedropper here and all I'm going to do is just grab a color from my reference. Right. And from here I could either increase or lower the saturation or play with the vibrance so I can make it more vibrant, less vibrant. I've got that right here, or I could just do that. So again, the eyedropper tool, super handy because it can pick up anything on your screen. It's not just D5. The next is the normal. Normal is where the magic happens when it comes to replicating those waves. So if you want a normal for glass, all you have to do is go over to Chrome, and just Google a waves normal map. So like water waves, that's what I mean. I just picked up one of these guys, super, super simple, the free, you can even make them in Photoshop. I'm going to go here and I'm going to load that guy in. So here you can see this looks horrible, right? It's like, it's way too much. It's way too warpy. It's way too extreme, but we know what we're doing. So we're going to reduce things. So I'm just going to set it to zero. So that's before, right? With nothing. And then this is with a little something. So I'm going to set it to 0.04. So here you can see it looks really, really distorted. And you're probably like, well, Andy, this doesn't look good. Well, that's where stretch comes in. So we can actually play with the scale of this. So I can drop in 0.5. That makes it a little bit more reasonable. Maybe 0.3. So it's really, really subtle there. That's totally fine. I'm getting a little bit of distortion. And then I can pair it with the strength here and lower this some more. You just want to have a little bit of distortion. So again, you've got this and you've got this. I also recommend turning on triplanar and that's going to kind of even out all the glass slabs that just in, just in case they have different UV scales. Uh, so make sure you do that and then you play with the, uh, the stretch. So I should have done that first, but anyways, the point is you can find a value that you like and play with your normal strength. I'll also point out, you can have your normal have its own individual UV. So you would only do this if your base color map, let's say you had like a Fritz, basically like a dotting had to be a specific scale and you want normal to be more of like a macro. You can basically tell it, Hey, do your own thing. All right. So you've got that. Um, and because the scale is going to drive me nuts, I'm going to just lower this to 0.1 and let's do 0.01 for this too. So it looks good. So then specular, people always ask me, what's the difference between specular and roughness? This is how I like to think of it. 
zero is basically not reflecting anything. It's basically like absorbing the, um, the light. Think of it as the highlights or the brightness of the reflections. So one is super, super vibrant. I can literally see the building behind me perfectly. If I lowered it, I wouldn't see anything. Nothing would be bounced. This, you know, generally I keep it really high unless I actually want to see inside the building. If I want to see inside the building, I'm going to lower this a little bit and then it's going to be able to let me see a little, little bit inside. It's not going to be as intense, right? Generally speaking, I crank that up. Then refraction from a physics point of view, glass, the refraction value is 1.52. You can look up um, the IOR of materials. Like let's say you're doing like jewelry or something like stones will have a different IOR than glass. So just putting that out there, 1.52, totally fine. The next is thickness. Always have this on if you're modeling a single plane glass. So what I mean is you're in Rhino or SketchUp, whatever, and it's just one simple plane at thickness, it's going to emulate thickness, right? So here you can control like how thick the glass actually is. Five is totally fine. Then there's roughness. And I'm going to get in really, really cro close here. So if you're not familiar with this is the higher the surface, the higher the value, the more rough a surface looks. The lower, the more clean it looks. Glass, you know, because of the lamination process and tempering and all that, it's kind of like a 0 0.01, 0 0.02. It's not 100% perfect. So that's why we've got that there. And then there's opacity. And that's basically how opaque or translucent do you want this to be? Again, this is going to be all about aesthetic reasons and what you want to show on the inside, if anything. So here you can kind of see that I can see the slabs. I know it's really hard. So what I can do is just to show you this, I go to assets. I'm going to put in a parallax background. And if you don't know what that is, interior parallax is a fancy camera trick to make it look like there's a 3d environment without it actually being there. So I'm just going to put this here just so you can see or not see, right? So let me place this here and now let me bump up the opacity. You see how it went away? So that's my point. You're probably going to want something like, like this, you know, if you have something there, if you don't have anything there, then yeah, you're probably going to do this. <laughs> so you can't see anything. That's a, that's a very easy way to just kind of save you some time. But generally speaking, you do want to see a little bit of the inside. So that looks great. The other thing I will say about these, um, these interiors, the parallaxes are really great because it looks like a, like a box, a room, but it's basically just a plane, right? If you don't want to do this manually, um, and that's totally understandable because you'd have to like copy it around and then replace it. You could just model a simple box or plane, put it behind the glass and then put a bunch of different windows and lights on it to kind of emulate a office building. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll give you a little extra bonus here. So if we go to basic model and then go to plane and let me just rotate this. And I do recommend you probably do this in your source application, just so it's like precise and it's like the same size and everything. I'm going to hit V I'll scale this up. Okay. V again. And you can see that since my tower is taller than it is wide, I need to break my scale. So you could do that right here. Then I could do V scale that up and then V to bring it in. Okay. And then V again to go to move. So I'm just going to do this area and just so it's easy for me to, um, you know, double check, I'm going to move it out and I'm going to place it back in here. So now watch this. All I'm going to do is I'm going to search for office. I guess I've already done this, right? Office building exterior facade flat. And I'm going to do nighttime. And I want something like this. So you see what I'm seeing here? It's basically light and dark, light and dark. And that's going to add a lot of realism really, really quick. It doesn't matter which one you go with. Uh, you just want something with variety, potentially not with like windows. Like this wouldn't work because it's adding architectural data. This kind of works because it's just a bunch of like random uh, boxes. So I don't mind that. I don't mind this either. 
but I'll show you how that works. So I'm just going to grab this guy and I'm going to save this. And let me go back. So a little trick, if you guys don't know this, um, you see how my plane is back there. And if I do eyedropper, it just goes to my glass. If you hold down alt, this is called a deep selection. And now I click and this is actually my glass or sorry, it's the interior plane that we just dropped. So hold down alt and then click when you have the eyedropper. So now watch this. I go to base color map. I grab those facade buildings. I'm going to get rid of that base color tint. And now I'm just going to poke my head in here and see what's going on. As you can see, the scale looks super, super crazy. Um, and just to help visualize what's going on, I'm going to pop it out. So it's rotated the wrong way. So what I'm going to do is let's do a 90 rotate. And I'm going to start cleaning up the stretch or the scale, right? So let's lower this. And I can also change that and this and I can try and align it with the floor if I want it and then if I want to be fancy I plug in that same texture that I had for the uh, the base map into emissive and now only the lights glow which is really handy and then if you want to be a pro switch it to a temperature and now you can drop it like accurate lighting information so we've got that and let me plug this in and now look at that I've got a pretty detailed looking skyscraper in no time. So a lot of that is just material magic, right? We've got beautiful glass and we've got this cool little interior material as well. So anyways, that's it for this tutorial. Just wanted to give you guys a quick tutorial on how to improve your glass because we use it everywhere in ArcViz. It deserves to look amazing. If you have any questions about this, drop it in the comments. We'll get back to you like the video, and if you made it this far, think about subscribing so I can see you next time. See ya.